What's up everyone? Today we'll be looking at the ENFP personality type using the one and only Robin Williams as an example. I had to cut and edit the original interview for the sake of this analysis because, well, it was kind of all over the place, but if you'd like to watch it in full, you can always find the source in the description below. Alright guys, here's some things to look out for in this interview. Any or extroverted intuition will be in the first slot, so the dominant slot, and some keywords for any are pattern recognition through consideration of different possibilities, innovation, spontaneity, uh, the mind will be constantly popping with ideas, and ENFPs will like to you know, compare and contrast new experience, new ideas with what is already known conceptually, and um, they will like to combine ideas together. Introverted feeling in the second, it deals with uh, self-expression, the deep emotional state of the self, um, being genuine, being authentic, uh, and it's a way of processing information um, and judging that information. You can even take it to like the right hemisphere of the brain. Uh, NE and FI together in the first and the second for ENFPs, what I like to think of it, it's, it's kind of like a whirlwind of passions. And it's a good way, you know, Robin Williams is an excellent example for this because he, he can think of ideas and impressions to do on the spot and he can pull characters um, f from within, from within with FI, um, you know, through self-expression. FE in the sixth, consideration of others, harmony, group dynamics. This is why Robin was so good with connecting with the, the audience or the crowd as a whole you know feeding off of the energy that he was feeling externally from the from the crowd and even using that to know what to say what not to say um and you know like bouncing bouncing off the energy of the crowd um it's also uh, it can also be a uh, skill with mimicry so when robin is mimicking imitating even mocking at times other people other cultures um, that this is Effie and Effie can also be correlated with um, usually wide facial expressions so when he's mimicking others when he's talking about others this is this is the Effie coming out TE uh, rational thinking um, it likes dealing with systems facts sources quotes things that have been proven to work and it's also a form of deductive reasoning and lastly, SI in the fourth, this has to do with, you know, um, internal sensory information. And you have to remember that, you know, as we get older, the functions get stronger. So Robin has aged in this interview, but even so, he very clearly recalls, you know, this past tangible, uh, realistic information of, of what happened to him. And, you know, he tells stories through that. So these are the, the functions to look out for in this interview. The other three are not really important this time. So hope that helps. Too late now, <laughs> too late now. With the instant high that you get from when you know, 10,000 people are laughing their heads off, is what's your, what's your brain doing? What are your neurotransmitters doing? Is it the last legal high available? Yeah, I think so for me after rehab. Yeah, I think it's that idea that it, there is this kind of you know, when it works, it's great, and when it doesn't, it's painful. It's, mm. it's the same thing. You're, when it's not working, there's that weird thing of, ah, and you start to, you know, sphincter everybody <laughs> out. <laughs> but when it's working, it's that, it's that weird thing about you surfing and kind of like you're in you know, that thing. Athletes describe it as the same thing of being, oh, it's working. <laughs> yeah, working. And then, then you start to, and then the great thing is if you can find new stuff, then mm. that's like, inshallah, the great gift. So extroverted intuition, especially when it's in the first slot, it loves interacting with the environment and coming up with new possibilities and ideas that interconnect and branch off each other. It's kind of like when it pops, it doesn't stop. So ENFPs, because they have any in the first, it's like their minds never stop coming up with new ideas and comparing already known concepts to new ones. That's what makes them so good with innovation, spontaneity, improvisation, stuff like that. Yeah, thank you. 
How do you know you've nailed it though? How do you, is, is there, a, do you try and you nail it really to. early? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, you know, but do you try and hit it really early and get that? You try and just come on strong enough just to, I mean, sometimes you can come on too strong and kind of speed through stuff and sometimes that's the main thing of it is to relax, take it easy and take your time. Um, you try and just hit hard first and then once you're in, kind of relax. It's usually that weird thing about, okay, great, and then take it easy, we have an hour and a half to go. And it helps to kind of, you know, and then see that some things work and other things like mentally go, no, lose <coughs> that, lose that. This is just my opinion, but I find that any doms in general, they're the most open-minded of the types because of their drive to go out and explore new possibilities in order to compare them with what they already know conceptually, even if it means that they'll fail. Because, so I was about to say, it must be a really fine line to dance between, you've got all this great material, you know it works, but then to go, I might just leave that because this is working better. Yeah, so. and, and sometimes you'll try something and it'll just it'll be like, no, come back, you know, it doesn't work. But sometimes you've got to try that. You have to try and, you know, to see if you can expand on it or, and really, that's the, the really the ballsy move is to say, okay, let's see if you can find something new there. Occasionally, when I'm on the road doing, you know, big places, it's a little difficult to go, let's try it now, you know, yeah, in front yeah. of 8,000 people going, now is not the time. But in small clubs, yeah, that's the only place to go, especially late at night. That's the place where you really find weird, kind of wonderful things. That's the, you know, the area. Are you always writing down jokes and... No, no just, I write, like, ideas. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was talking to Mort Sol and he talked about uh, America's a, like a country going into rehab. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if they have a, a rehab for nations called empires, run by an old Englishman going, hello, welcome. Once, once you realize you're powerless over other countries, that's the first step. Come on in. Be Don't talk to the French. They still think they've got it. Really. And I tried that one. And sometimes it works, and other times people are going, no. So America plus rehab equals new idea, which goes into another idea and another concept. That's what any looks like when it starts to take off. And that's why any doms can seem like they can talk about anything and branch off into their own ideas in the moment. When that happens. There's a line which says that, you know, good artists borrow, but great artists steal. Mm -hmm. um, have you stolen from any great artists? I don't know. In the old days, it was that whole thing. I, I just hung out in comedy clubs too much. And I would hear things, and then I'd be improvising, and shit would come out, and then I'd have to go. But I don't do that anymore. I just, I, I can't. I have to just kind of go... I would think, well, my, I would quote people now. The idea is if you quote it on stage, is that feeling. I, my favorite line about Australia is Eric Idle's, where he said, he landed in Australia and they said, Mr. Idle, you have a criminal record. And he said, I didn't know one was still required. <laughs> but, you know, it's that idea of, you know, I don't know, influenced by, yeah, I could say, like, just like when you read about Pryor, initially Pryor was doing Cosby almost word for word. And probably in the beginning I was doing, like, Jonathan, not routines of his, but influenced by. So I could say I was more like, because I don't have an act per se, but more kind of a cesspool of consciousness. So that's a weird thing. It's that old thing of like, okay, how the fuck do you do this? Okay, just, you know, ideas. A cesspool of consciousness. Well, I guess that's a very any way of describing any, or at least approaching something new with other ideas and concepts in mind and combining them all together. But anyways, the guilt that he felt when he admitted to using other people's material um, and him being genuine about it, that's F.I. And the way he talked about other comedians and what they did, well, that's F.E. It was crazy. I was going to, um, why are comedians such complex people? I think it's just that weird thing of what, what drives you to do it, you know? It's that weird thing of why would you get out on stage and talk about things? And my favorite comedians that I've ever seen were always the most honest, like, Prior, you know, prior would be talking about dying and making it funny. And the, the recent kind of embodiment of that is Chris Rock does it, mm. Louis C.K. does it. He talks about really painful things, but he's just talking about his life. And, but, and the idea of going on stage and going, I'm going to talk about really painful things, but let's see if you relate to it. And they're complex because it's at, I think it's a survival mechanism. You know, sometimes they did it because it's one way to get laid. Sometimes they did it because it was a, it's an outlet. It's, you know, cheaper than, cheaper than therapy. And, and in, in a weird way, they said it's a, the things that these things that are, you know, spinning inside them that they have to talk about. And it depends on which way you do it, that, you know, well, what drives you. Because mm. they're very private people, normally comedians, but on stage. Yeah, but, but it, you can do things on stage that if you did in public, you'd be arrested. It's that weird thing, it's almost like legalized Tourette's. You can do things and say things that people, and especially people heckle. 
it, it is that way. Have you ever seen the famous YouTube picture of the guy, who, he's, a, he's a comedian, he's playing guitar, and this guy heckles him in the front row, and he finally just goes, bang! <laughs> and then and all of a sudden you can hear the audience go, no! And then all of a sudden he went, he deserved it. And from the back of the room, this old woman went, no, he didn't! <laughs> It's that weird thing, you know, it's, it is a strange group, but it's a weird kind of confederacy, you know, that there's this weird competition, but a weird kind of union. That's a weird, the, the combo of it all. Mm. An EFI, a fee, a fi, an EFI. Guys, it's happening way too fast for me to break it down bit by bit. But what I'd rather say is that his concern and his care for humanity, philanthropy, philosophy, you know, his interest in why human beings do the things that they do. These are all NF, like idealist temperament sorts of things. Um, and a really good example of this is if you've ever seen the movie Dead Poets Society and the, the character that he plays in that movie, it's an extremely good example of uh, the NF temperament. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's interesting times. Does it make you angry when you yeah. watch the news and you see things like Sarah Palin and Tea Party? You know, you, you're angry, but at the same time, you go, you. But you weird. I mean, they won some seats, but the good news is they didn't win a, a lot of the ones they thought they'd win. You still hope for the the triumph of rational, mm. you know, the triumph of reason. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is that weird thing. It's that whole thing about angry. I mean, I get angry because of just the, that. There's there's news, and then there's Fox News. Mm. You know, that there's, it seems like we repeat, you deny. I mean, they have this weird thing. If they say things, they're going, that's not even confirmed. And they'll put it out there, that's definite. It's going, where, where? That's the third slot extroverted thinking coming out. TE, being concerned with facts, how things work, systems, rational thinking. And despite what most people think, ENFPs actually learn things pretty quickly, as long as they're coming from a reputable source. And they'll take it and move on to their next objective. ENFPs, they'll usually set their own goals and they know what they want to achieve in life and they'll learn anything they need in order to get there. In the old days, people would watch the news like Cronkite and they would watch it and go like, this is important because they had faith in him. The last great newsman was Dan Rather and they disenfranchised him with the information about Bush's war, mm. you know, the war record as a DVD actually. But the fact that did he serve in the National Guard and then they said he got false information and as a, as a true journalist with ethics, he said, all right, then I'm withdrawing. Mm. Last guy, gone. So no, I don't know if there's anybody to listen to except pundits, you know, which are just, you know, these guys spinning opinion. And me, being the psycho candy pundit that I am, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. If you enjoyed this analysis, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helped me out. And uh, yeah. Take care for now.